So what is this realm that Yawm al-Mithaq took place in, that the Day of the Covenant took place in? It's a realm that's known as Alam al-Dharr, which is the, the realm of, uh, of, of a dhar. A dhar is where we were first created, where we were first brought to life. And that alam, that realm, is part of a greater realm, which is known as alam al-arwah, the realm of the souls, where the souls gather. So alam al-dhar is more specific than alam al-arwah, the, the place where we took that covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that realm that we existed in as we took that covenant, is a part of alam al-arwah, the realm of the souls. Just like after we pass away from this world, there's alam al-barzakh, uh, Al-Barzakh, uh, which is the transition realm, is also part of Alam Al-Arwah, the realm of the souls. So what is this Alam Al-Arwah? And it's a really strange realm. The realm of the souls is a really strange realm. Uh, it has never ceased to exist. We still interact with it even in this dunya at times when we're in our sleep. Uh, partially, but not fully. As the scholars describe when we pass away, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, Allah Yatawaffa Al-Anfus. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala takes the uh, he takes the souls at the time of death. But also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that whenever we go to sleep, right, yatawafakum, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes your souls. So your souls partially exit your body and they exit into this realm or they enter into this realm of the souls. And when you're in this realm of the souls, you interact with things that, that you're not accustomed to interacting. So is it possible, for example, that you end up meeting uh, another person in that realm? Absolutely. And Imam al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he affirmed this, that there are times that the soul would exit the body at the time of sleep, partially, and it would interact with another soul that's in alam al-arwah. That's not to say that every time someone sees uh, someone from, uh, someone that they, that's passed away in their dreams, that it's a true dream, but certainly it can be. It's like when you see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that, that ability to see him alayhi salatu wa salam in our dreams, and in the day of, on the day of judgment and in Jannah al Firdaus, uh, you know, you get a chance to see the Prophet. ﷺ. Your soul interacted with a soul in that realm, which is so strange that we really cannot we, we cannot define the parameters of that realm. We are completely clueless when it comes to that realm. Um, in fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet, ﷺ, Yes ruh. They ask you about the soul in general. And it's so complex that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qul ruh min amri rabbi. Just say that. The soul is from the affairs of your Lord. There is no way to even really fully put parameters or define what the soul is, what a ruh is. Okay? So the question becomes, what were our souls doing from the time that we took that covenant until the time that we came into this world? Were they interacting with one another? Because they do interact with one another, as is established through many authentic narrations, in Al-Barzakh, in the realm after this world. What about before this world? The Prophet ﷺ says, Al-Arwahu Junudun Mujannada. That the souls are like recruited soldiers. Ma ta'arafa minha talaf, wa ma tanakara minha khtalaf. That those souls that used to get along before they came into this world, they naturally find themselves inclining towards one another in this dunya as well. And those souls that didn't get along in, in the previous realm, they also find a natural aversion to one another. And there's a beautiful story behind this that uh, many people don't know. Aisha radiallahu anha, who narrates this hadith, she says that there is a woman in Mecca that used to make all of the women laugh. She was known for being a jokester. Uh, the women of Mecca would go to her for some, you know, uh, for some comic relief, right? She would sit with all of the women in Mecca and she would make them laugh. And she became Muslim. Now Aisha radiallahu anha doesn't say her name. She could be one of the famous Sahabiyat, but she became Muslim. So this female companion of the Prophet sallallahu was well known for joking all the time and making all of the women laugh. So naturally she was a very pleasant woman. Then she made hijrah with the Prophet sallallahu So they migrated from Mecca to Medina. And as you know, when they got to Medina, the Prophet ﷺ paired off the Muhajirun from Mecca, uh, the people that migrated from Mecca, with the Ansar, with the helpers in Medina. So they ended up in the houses of various Ansar, in these different houses. So she ended up in the house of the woman in Medina, who used to make all the women in Medina laugh. <laughs> so the Prophet ﷺ, you know, when he saw this, that this woman that was famous for making everyone laugh in Mecca, just happened to end up in the house of the woman who was famous for making all the other women laugh in Medina. And they became great friends and they were great sahabiyat, they were great companions. The Prophet ﷺ, he commented by saying, Al arwahu junudun wa jannada. He said, these souls, they knew each other in the past. So those souls that used to incline towards one another, they incline towards one another in this dunya as well. 
and those souls that felt an aversion to one another, they still feel, feel an aversion to one another as well. And that's why sometimes, subhanAllah, you meet someone for the first time and you're like, you know, I feel like I've met you before. And, and you're, you naturally have an affinity towards that person. You know, especially whenever it's in the capacity of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You meet someone in Hajj, or you meet someone in Umrah, or you meet someone in the Masjid, and you just naturally feel like you've known each other your entire lives. You probably did. You probably used to sit with one another in that previous realm, and you probably liked one another in that previous realm. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Maryam, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ سَيَجْعَلُوا لَهُمُ الرَّحْمَانُ وُدَّةِ That indeed those who have believed and done righteous deeds, the most merciful will appoint for them affection. He will send them special friends. SubhanAllah. So the believing souls will naturally be directed towards one another by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you do have divinely appointed friends and those people that you love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in particular, you probably loved each other in a previous realm as well. And Allahu alam how it used to be. Allahu alam, you know, uh, what the, what it even meant to be friends in that realm and what it would mean in the next realm. But we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that when we find ourselves in that alam, in that world of souls, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala includes us amongst the believing souls that are rejoicing and that are from the righteous and those that, that rejoice in the, com in the companionship of, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam.